Stuart. Welcome to um, the Friars Welsh program. Um, Francis said it was some of the stuff we found there was really important. What are your memories of it, and why do you think somebody should bother to have a look at that particular program? Friars Welsh. Uh, we set out because there was an aerial photograph, and it had two very, very clear rectangular structures on it, which to everybody in archaeology that knows anything would look at the aerial photograph and say, Roman temples, Romano-Celtic temples, because that's a diagnostic signature you look for. They were crop marked. And that's exactly what we found on the ground. And what was important about that site was not only did we find that they survived, but we found a third one. And then we found a fourth one. And, and so it went on. And, and, and not only have we got these two diagnostic rectangular temples, we got a circular one as well. And it just, it was, it made that site into a, a, a almost a temple complex, I think are the words that we, that we used at the time. And they are very, very rare. And with that combination of, of temples together and the quality of the finds we found there, that to me was one, of, I, in many ways, it's one of the most underrated, I don't know if it's underrated time teams, I don't know if anybody actually rates them, but um, I, I, I've never actually, when I've done talks and things, people talk about this programme, that programme. I don't think I've, I've heard people say, oh, what about the Friars Wash one? Wasn't that outstanding? It was, to me, it was an outstanding programme in what time team could do. Three days and you end up with one of the probably most important temple complexes that have been found in this country for many a long year. And so clear and diagnostic what was going on there. I thought it was a, a terrific program. And you mentioned to me um, when we were chatting uh, before, I think, that there was one particular find that you remember. Uh, because I don't, I don't normally regard you as a finds person. You're sort of out. That it, it's a rather tiny thing, and you're interested in the bigger landscape. What was that find? But also. What did the bigger landscape of that site tell you by the end of the programme? Well, the find, in fact, there were two finds, really, that, that stand out in my memory from that site. One was a brooch, a Roman brooch, uh, which was really very clear when it was found. It wasn't difficult to, to see what it was. It was. It had a, a moon shape on it and... Guy de la Bedway, I gave a lovely description of, of what this might have represented and people praying to their gods and, and you know, their worries and concerns that they have and why people made offerings at, at temples and so on. And then we've, uh, which sort of really brought it to life that you know, people were coming here and they were, they were concerned about everyday things as well as big things. <laughs> they were worried. That's what, to some extent, religion fulfills that purpose. And then on, on, on the same site, we, Francis, I think, found this, this stone, which he, it had two hollows in it. And when you put it in the, the right light, it just looked like two eyes staring out. It was like a head. And, and so the, the, the world of time team over the last three days Half of it thought it was just a, a stone that the you know, farmer had dropped in the field, as it were. It was it was nothing, uh, and half thought this was really quite significant uh, and might represent some sort of deity almost that was being worshipped at that site. And that one in particular stands out because I'm I felt it certainly fell into the camp at the time, and I've seen it in other sites, and you see it in archaeology a lot that natural objects that look like something do find their way into prehistoric sites. And in fact, they may have been worshipped on that site before the Romans got there. And that may have been almost the reason why those temples were placed there, that the Romans were wanting to continue that tradition of worshipping on the same site. We see that in so many of the sites in the, in the country, this, this desire to appease the Celtic gods as well as their, their own gods. And, and that one object was really, you know, really very evocative 
and harnessing that power of religion. But when you when, when you stood back from the temples and looked at the landscape, of course, it started to make sense why it was why this site might be there in terms of movement down to St Albans, a major Roman site in the Roman period. People going along this 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 major Roman road. If somebody you know, found this head there, for instance, or if the, you know, there, there might have been some lumps and bumps there in the, you know, in the Roman period that they saw as well, like a barrow there or something, and decided to appease the gods by putting a shrine there and then a temple, and then more temples, um, people making offerings, putting coins on the site will get more and more important, be commercial, a commercial centre almost. That head that Francis found, I, I firmly believed it is a source, exactly the sort of object that would have frightened people in prehistory or you know, made them a little bit conscious that, uh, that it looked human um, because the, the, the temples at Friars Wash were Romano-British Celtic type temples as well. They were, they were old gods, new gods being worshipped. That, that is an object from the past that the Romans would have wanted to keep going. And strangely enough, I was looking on, on the web the other day um, and I saw the objects that have been found up in the Orkneys, and I think 16 of them. And you look at some of those, and they're natural stones, but they look like heads. And I've seen similar things. One in Northumberland, the site I worked on, was found in a dry stone wall. You look at it, and it's a head. And you can tell it, you know, it's, it just looks like a head. And that was found near a Roman site. And so I think that those two together, you've got one extreme to the other. One was a really elaborately carved brooch that was venerated, and the other was probably a natural stone that just looked like it had two eyes and a face. And those two objects on one side stuck in my memory and still and still do. Lovely, Stuart. Uh, I think we should just um, uh, say that the, the title of that, that programme um, was, we had directors who were getting quite creative with titles at this point. <laughs> Uh, they like puns and they liked alliteration and that ended up being called the trouble with temples uh friars walsh hertfordshire so thank you very much right. for that little insight into into that mm -hmm.